welcome to another video from explainingcomputers.com. This time we're going to take a look at this, the Odyssey X86 J4125 version 2 single board computer. This is the latest incarnation of the Odyssey X86 range from Seed Studio, the first of which was this, the Odyssey X86 J4105, here in a nice blue case, and this was my top new single board computer of 2020. I'm therefore very interested to check out the latest model, so let's go and take a closer look. Right, here we have Seed Studio's new SBC, which is sold in seven different versions. These start from $218 for a board with no eMMC flash storage and no Windows license, and include a version with no eMMC but with the optional metal case and a 128GB M.2 SSD for which the price is $269. And then at the top of the range there's the version we have here, which has got 64GB of eMMC flash storage an activated copy of Windows 11 Pro, and a price of $298. And just before we open this up, I want to note I've not purchased this computer, I've been loaned this to make this review, so I'll be returning this to Seed Studio when the video is complete. And just to be clear, I've not been paid in any other way to make this video. So let's open this up. I think it just slides out like this. There we go, like that, and uh, presumably this, oh no, we can't open it straight away, it needs to be cut open. We have got to stand him a knife on hand just to uh, cut through there, and it now opens up like that. And I imagine, yes, there we have our board, and an exciting sticker as well. Is that the Windows license, something like that? I think it probably is. Anyway, let's just take this out. There's the board. Always great to have a new single board computer. There is a manual in here as well, but this also lifts out. And I know from previous Odyssey boards, this will be the power supply, I imagine. Let's just get that out like that. Put that down on the floor. And in here, I suspect we will find a power supply and um, various cables for connecting up drives and things. And presumably in here is also, yes, there's a packet of uh, different adapters for the power supply so we can use it in lots of different countries. I won't open these up right now. Let's go back to the board itself, much more exciting. And I think the first thing we should do is to compare this to a previous Odyssey board, which I've got over here. I've taken it out of the case. So let's put the new board down next to it. And as you can see, they are very, very similar, but there are three critical differences. Firstly, this new board is based on an Intel Celeron J4125 quad-core CPU, as was the board before it, but the first Odyssey board here is based on an Intel Celeron J4105, so we've got a more powerful CPU on this board. Secondly, whilst all Odyssey boards have got GPIO connectivity, the new one here has got an integrated RP2040, so it's like having a Raspberry Pi Pico integrated on this board. And finally, whilst all Odyssey X86 boards have got two Ethernet ports, we can see them here on the different boards. On the earlier boards, these were one gigabit Ethernet, whereas on the new board here, we have got 2.5 gigabit Ethernet. So this board with its twin 2.5 gigabit Ethernet ports may be of great interest to those planning particular network applications. Now, Let's delve more deeply into what we have here. And if we turn the board over, you'll see we've got a very large heatsink and fan. And beneath these, we've got our quad-core Intel Celeron J4125, which has got a base frequency of 2 GHz, boosting to 2.7. The J4125 has also got Intel UHD Graphics 600. And on this board, this is coupled with 8 GB of low-power DDR4 RAM, and the 64 gigabytes of eMMC flash storage mentioned earlier. And whilst this is all very solid, it's back on the top of the board, we see why the Odyssey X86 range stands out for many other mini PCs. Most significantly, we've got two M.2 slots, 
one of which can take a SATA SSD and the other an NVMe SSD. And we've also got a standard SATA port and these power connectors. And in the little packet it comes with the board we saw earlier, you get this. This allows you to connect a standard SATA drive to uh, the SATA port and one of the power connectors. So on this board, you can connect in two M.2 SSDs and another drive as well. And you've got your 64 gigabytes of onboard flash storage on this board. Or if you wanted even more storage, you could plug in an M.2 to SATA adapter to give you a couple more SATA ports and one of the M.2 slots in addition to this one. So you could have three, if you like, external SATA drives and an M.2 drive. And again, the 64 gigabytes of onboard flash storage. So this is a great SBC for storage related applications. Also on the top of the board, before I forget, we have got a socket here for a real-time clock battery. And again, this came in the packet we saw earlier, so we can plug that in. We'll do that a bit later. And also on the top of the board, we've got this wireless module, and this offers 802.11, A, B, G, N, and AC Wi-Fi, and Bluetooth 5.0. Turning to the back of the board, we then find two Type-A USB 2 ports, a full-size HDMI 2.0 A connector, providing up to 4K output at 60 frames a second. We then got our twin 2.5 gigabit Ethernet ports, and then a power jack for the supplied 12 volt adapter, and a power button. Spinning 90, there's nothing new to report, as I've already mentioned the SATA connectivity. So, rotating again, on the front edge we find a micro SD card slot, and interestingly, this is stacked with a SIM card socket, which could be used in conjunction with a cellular module in one of the M.2 slots. Moving along from this socket, we then find two USB connectors, Type A and Type C, both USB 3.1, and the Type C connector also includes DisplayPort 1.2A connectivity, so we can drive a 4K 60 frames per second monitor from this port if we wish. And then finally, always welcome, we've got a 3.5mm audio jack. Lastly, taking our third quarter turn, we come across two GPIO connectors, and the first of these is 40-pin and Raspberry Pi compatible, and the second is 28-pin and connected to the onboard RP2040 microcontroller. And so there we are, the Odyssey x86J4125 version 2, an x86 SBC with an abundance of drive, network and GPIO connectivity, and so I think it's now high time to check out its performance. Greetings! As I have one available, I've decided to fit the Odyssey x86J4125 version 2 in the recomputer case that Seed Studio sell for $26.90. And the great thing about this case is that the top fits on like this, it holds on with magnets, but you've got this quick release down here so you can easily remove the top to get to drives and GPIO. So let's now get this all connected up. Here we are, and here we are now booting into Windows 11. Please note, this is not my first boot, as I have gone in already and made a few scaling changes. But the first boot was no different to what we're seeing right now, as all the setup had been completed, including an auto-login local account. So on the first boot, the board boots straight to the desktop. And indeed, if we go down to uh, the menu here and go to settings, we can take a look at that. Just go into this and go to accounts, and you can see we have a local administrator account set up on this system. And if we go across to system itself, we can take a look at the hardware on this system. We just go down to the bottom, it's down there in about. And uh, there we are. We can see we've got our Intel Celeron J4125, eight gigabytes of RAM, etc. And if we scroll down to the bottom of this, we can check out our activation over there. We can see we've got an active copy of Windows. Windows is activated with a digital license. Turning to the space available on our 64 gigabytes of eMMC flash storage, on the first boot we had 31.9 gigabytes free on our 57.3 gigabyte C drive. And since then I've installed all available updates and waited for just a moment and then for a few moments more. 
but now with all updates installed, we still have 31.2 gigabytes free on this drive, which is fine. And of course, if we wanted to, we could clone Windows across to a larger M.2 drive. In terms of software, this is a standard install of Windows 11 Pro. If we look in all apps, there are no surprises here, other than the fact that Windows still has this appalling size scroll bar, but other than that, that's the standard stuff we get in a Windows 11. And multimedia playback should be fine on this system. Let's just launch the Edge browser. Someone has to now and again. Let's do my standard YouTube playback test. And there we are, 1080p video is playing absolutely fine. We have no drop frames. I wouldn't expect it. You get good streaming media playback on a computer with a J4125 CPU. Right, so we can perform some tests. I've now plugged in this WD Black 500 gigabyte NVMe M.2 SSD. This is rated to good 3,500 megabytes a second transfer speed. And I've also put into the SATA M.2 slot this integral SATA M.2 SSD 256 gigabyte drive rated at a good 500 megabytes a second transfer speed. And connected to the standard SATA port, I've got this two and a half inch Kingston SATA SSD, which again should perform at a good 500 megabytes a second. So if we go across to the Windows desktop, here I've got my PC showing all of the drives. Our C drive is the internal EMMC on the system. Then we have our SATA M.2 drive. We have our NVMe M.2 drive, and we have our two and a half inch SATA drive. So let's use Crystal Disk Mark to test everything out. And we'll start with the internal EMMC. So let's run all of the tests. And there we are. And these are very respectable results for the onboard EMMC, much better than we'd see for the onboard flash storage on most single board computers. So where should we go next? Let's start with the two and a half inch SATA drive, which is down there as a drive F. Let's test that out. And there we are. And this is also a good result. Over 550 megabytes a second is very good for a SATA device. The write speed is lower, but we don't really care about that here. This reflects the fact that Kingston isn't a brilliant SSD. What we're trying to test here is the speed of the interfaces on the Odyssey board, and clearly its SATA interface is performing at expected SATA 3 speed, so that's very good. So let's test the other SATA drive, the M.2 one, which is on the D down there. Should give us a very similar result, I expect, but uh, let's have a look. And yes, another very similar, very good result. Clearly it's a slightly better drive than the one we've got in our M.2 slot. But the key thing here is that the SATA 3 interface in the M.2 slot is clearly working at a full speed. So let's move on to the NVMe drive, the WD Black down there. This is a drive E. Let's uh, test that out. Should of course be significantly faster. And yes, it is significantly faster. About 1800 megabytes a second of data can be transferred across the NVMe interface on the Odyssey board. And this reflects the fact that whilst the NVMe interface on the board is four lane, it is PCIe 2.0, so we cannot transfer data at the maximum speed of a Western Digital Black drive, which will do about 3500 megabytes a second. But even so, I'm very pleased with our tests of the storage interfaces on the Odyssey X86 J4125 version 2. It is clearly a single board computer that's well equipped for storage applications. Right, I've been doing some power consumption tests and can report that the Odyssey draws around 4 or maybe 5 watts at idle. Meanwhile, at the other end of the spectrum, the maximum power consumption that I've been able to measure has been 21 watts. And note, this is with no additional drives connected. This maximum power consumption was recorded whilst running Passmark's 3D graphics tests, such as this one with our happy friends, the floating jellyfish in space. And in case you're wondering, the final Passmark results were low, as we can see here, which is just what we'd expect for a Celeron J4125 PC. This said, the tests did cause the Odyssey's temperature controlled fan to activate, and I can report that it's very quiet indeed. Meanwhile, guess what? 
I've installed Linux Mint. Here we are running Linux Mint on, on the Odyssey board, and it works very nicely. And when I did the install, I first went into the Odyssey's BIOS, which is very good, and turned off the EMMC flash storage to leave the Windows drive entirely untouched by the Linux installation. But with the EMMC now turned back on, the Odyssey now dual boots with the F7 key used to select Linux when desired. Back here in Linux, I've installed the uh, GIMP photo editor. I didn't do this in Windows, I thought we'd do it in Linux. It comes up uh, nice and quickly. That is really very fast. That was very good, wasn't it? Let's just do a new document like that. And we'll just do a little bit of painting. This thing is, is very responsive. You could certainly do some very nice photo editing, some work in GIMP here. And this is interesting to me because clearly this is a very responsive system. And yet, if we think back to the results we got from Passmark, as I was just talking about, they were very low. And I guess that reflects the fact that Passmark is largely used by gamers, people with very high-end systems needed for things like gaming and video editing, but not needed for the majority of things people do these days on a computer, which can be handled perfectly well by a system like this. And uh, talking of handling things, I've also installed somewhere under here, if I can find it, there we are, Caden Live, the video editor. Some of you will now know what is coming. Here is Caden Live, and we'll load in my standard SBC test render I've been using for quite a few years now. Let's just play this, see what performance is like on the timeline, and it is fine. We've got a transition here from a Dux to a Stag Deer. There we are, that's working no problem at all. But the real reason we're here is to do a render test. Let's go up to Project and Render like that, and I've got a script set up for this render which I've used on other SBCs in the past. So let's start the script and speed on through. And there we are, a surprisingly slow result of 1 minute 20 seconds, which is faster than a Raspberry Pi 4 and a BMAX B1 Plus Mini PC, but slower than an Orange Pi 5 or a Latte Panda 3 Delta. The Odyssey x86 J4125 version 2 is a very nice x86 single board computer. Granted, it's more expensive than many mini PCs with the same processor and RAM specification, but the storage and other connectivity is far more extensive, and for networking projects, the dual 2.5 gigabit Ethernet ports are very welcome. But now that's it for another video. If you've enjoyed what you've seen here, please press that like button. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe, and I hope to talk to you again very soon.